What is up everybody? Today I'm going to be introducing you to a very very important idea. Especially now that we're getting into the fields of AGI, uh, multitask learning, etc. Which is natural gradient descent. And this is a possible replacement for what we've been doing so far in gradient descents, which is, stoch which is SGD, stochastic gradient descent. I am super excited. I hope you are too. So first, let's do a quick summary of the video and what we're going to be the main ideas before we dive into the math and the details a little bit more. So essentially, natural gradients are an improvement on gradient descent, which are trying to fix the destructive updates in the, in the backpropagation process. So when you think about gradient descent and how it works normally, you're just trying to improve performance on these accuracy or F1 score or whatever without necessarily fixing like without accounting for what you've learned so far so when you don't account for things so far what happens as you don't account for them you're actually if you have enough gradient updates eventually you will lose the information you picked up beforehand it's going to get removed uh, reduced and this is what's called destructive updates uh when you start getting into things like a uh, very very large a training sets with multiple kinds of data modalities, parameters, etc. This can become really, really pronounced. And this is why language models, very large language models, they don't just get better. You'll often hear about them getting worse, even though there's more money being put into the training, etc. It's because there is a lot of great, uh, destructive updating. When you learn one thing, when you pick up one ability, you start to lose others. And what we want to be able to do is we want to be able to have things that can be both um, that keeps getting the performance updates and performance improvements by going across, but it doesn't lose the prior insights. And these prior insights can then be encoded, shared, and improve the performance of your AI system overall. So you can see, um, and you're going to see a lot of these papers, as always, th these slides will be linked so that you can take a look at them and learn from them. But these papers are we're going to refer to a lot of research that shows how good natural gradients can be if you can make it work. Natural, so we've talked a lot about this. This is just going, getting into this in a little bit more detail. How this works really is that we, gradient descent is not considering the curvature of your function space. So it doesn't consider, okay, how many, how are my parameters and how are they changing and how does changing my parameters change my overall performance, etc what is the deviation that's getting etc all of that it just tries to move things along and improve performance natural gradients by considering the curvature of your parameter space how are your parameters distribution what are the uh, statistical distributions what this does is it one it will lead to faster convergence because you need fewer update steps it's not going to get stuck in local minima because again you're considering the entire curvature you're not just considering uh, one or two of these things and because you're considering the curvature of your entire space, it's very unlikely that you're going to get stuck somewhere because your model is going to be like, oh, I can do this, I can do that. And this combined with other things is going to help you reduce the loss of insights. Again, some of this might seem a little in up in the air right now. We will get address the mathematical things a little bit later. For now, why haven't you seen NGDs? NGDs are really, really bad because uh, they take up a lot of memory and a lot of computational space. Again, what we have to do is we no longer have to consider just the derivative of the loss as we move from, uh, our things along, but also how are these things changing? What is the fluctuations like, etc. As fluctuations are getting worse, uh, this is all that extra computation that we have to do, which is why if you try to expand this beyond small neural networks, it doesn't work. That's why this only works with some experiments. But one of the coolest things we're starting to see now is people started to see, hey, look, uh, we're having all of these issues. We saw this with computation first because you're using the same data set for object detection, this, that, 10 different tasks done on the same things. So you're using very large um, combined data sets. And people are like, hey, look, we're, how can we get something that's really good at a bunch of these uh, different related things? And they started experimenting with natural gradients. And what they saw is, a natural gradients um, if we start uh, programming some approximations so instead of trying to compute everything exactly we use some approximations we might be able to get good performance with relatively efficient processing 
and this really is uh, why I am excited to talk to you about it because some of these have been really really cool and they are efficient enough. Let's get into the math of where grad gradient descent falls short. In a nutshell, gradient descent is a brainwashing communist. Let's talk about what this means in more detail. Essentially, keep in mind that our gradient is a vector because we're changing a bunch of parameters. And we multiply this vector by a scalar learning rate. This is what really determines um, how you're changing your, how you're updating your parameters. Really, this is a fixed distance because scalar times, vector, so everything is being moved by the same amount. Your learning rate is scalar. The problem with this is you're diff you have different kinds of parameters and they take two things differently. Some parameters require lots of changing. Some parameters require very little changing. And the way they're distributed, the way they impact your probabilities, etc., they are different. And you can't just say all of these will be the same. You can't just have like a big brother come in and say, hey, I know what's best for you. Let's do all of these. This is the best number. What you want to do is have individual parameters contribute individually, you know. You don't want uh, the hardworking parameters that do a lot. You don't want their hard efforts being mooched, mooched off by the lazy parameters that don't do anything. That really is why it's a communist, because it tries to enforce this equality with that learning rate. That is the enemy. So remember, on 4th of uh, July, when you're feeling all of that American freedom running through your veins, make sure that you don't use a fixed learning rate with scalars because that that is the enemy of america and freedom everywhere well we have that but we have another problem and this is called the destructive interference and this we've talked about the commie part let's talk about brainwashing when you have two uh, distributions that have identical performances you might be like hey what's the difference i don't care but keep in mind if I have a distribution here and I have a distribution that's way off, like on the other side of the world. And that's how I'm jumping and getting a good performance. I'm, I'm leaving out a lot of the insights that I've learned to get to that other distribution. Conversely, when you have, if you can minimize, if you can get the same 3% performance improvement, but minimize the amount of uh, divergence you have between your to this thing, uh, uh, distributions, probability distributions, then you're, you've retained a lot of the information between them. This is the insight into natural gradient descent. Essentially, you are viewing a model, your neural network parameters, as a set of probability distributions. And what you're trying to do is create, when I create a new probability distribution, I want to minimize its divergence from my old one, my prior. My prior is the model parameters currently. The new updated parameter should have minimized divergence between them. And this way, even if performance is identical, I know I'm not losing information, which again becomes really, really cool when you start looking into multitask training, all of these other things where if I'm aligning one way, something else goes wrong. So I, I don't know what I'm doing suddenly. I, I want to cry. I want to do all of this. Instead, if I'm at least updating it on the previous things, then at least it's not forgetting. That really is the two areas where no, normal gradient descent falls short. And that is what we want to address. Before we proceed, I'd appreciate it if you hit the like button because it helps with the algorithm and all. And now we're going to continue. Uh, this, you can just pause here. In this is really the more technical way of saying everything we've said so far. Pause it, read it if you're interested. Um, I don't really have much else to add beyond what I've done with the issues. So we're just going to move on. But as a quick reminder, we want to do this by... We want to make sure that individual parameters are updated in their own pace instead of trying to make everybody do everything together. And we're going to try um, solving destructive interference by keeping minimizing model updates in case you need proof about if this works pause look at this i don't need to read off the slide to show you you're all intelligent people let's move on but ngds just beautiful now let's talk about the math so far we've just talked about the ideas so this is 
what a natural gradient this is how you compute it in case you're getting very intimidated this part the uh, delta l l ish thingy is uh, just the loss function that's just that loss function that's a standard in all gradient descents and the f inverse is the fisher is the inverse of the fisher information matrix we're going to talk about that and we're going to talk about the mathematical intuitions of all of these so don't worry for now i want you to take a step back and think about a very interesting insight that enables a lot of this math or is uh, is why a lot of this math is relevant so kl divergence tells you how different two probability distributions are really um it's not a valid metric for distance because distances have to be symmetric the distance from a to b has to be the same as the distance from b to a the fun part is if you are giga chat enough and you make your neighborhood small enough you can just tell mathematicians uh, who come up with these definitions and these rules to go fuck themselves and you're just going to create um you're just going to treat kl divergence as a distance metric if the neighborhood small enough and you're giga chat enough you can do it nobody can stop you next when you have this behaving like a distance the second derivative of the kl divergence tells you how our um, overall models are and curvature is fluctuating with respect to our parameters i change this how much is my overall divergence fl uh, fluctuating so high fluctuation not good low fluctuation good high fluctuation means i'm i'm in one of those parameters that uh, you know kind of uh, shaky grounds low fluctuation means my parameters are pretty solid so if i am changing this a lot i am not overwriting previously learned information high fluctuation i don't i am writing rewriting a lot of um, previous information because my divergence is very very high so the fisher information matrix is going to approximate this second uh, is, is the an approximation for the second derivative of the divergence which is a pretty cool little trivia fact for you to know if you're out with some your date and they're like oh you never tell me anything fun you can just drop this information and watch them so now um let's talk about the math a little bit more uh again i don't personally think that derivations etc matter as much um as just understanding why things are structured the way they're structured and what decisions an equation makes so we're going to focus on that course i'm not an academic or a phd and you can probably tell why <laughs> i didn't really do too well with the academic side of things with that statement so here we're going to talk about first um, so first off what do we have we have this uh, square you'll see this term repeated twice delta log p of 0 this thing mathematically this is the log uh, likelihood over the parameters we're taking why are we squaring it we are squaring it so that we get the absolute value absolute value is very cool you'll see a lot of error metrics uh, if you studied any of the error metrics you'll see these ideas show up a lot next why do we take the derivative of the log likelihood the derivative as with everything else tells you how things are changing with respect to something so in this case we're taking the derivative with respect to the parameters that's what the theta is that's the parameters this is again very common mathematical notation so we're taking derivative with respect to this to tell us okay what is um how is my overall log likelihood changing as i tweak my parameters next we take the expected value because we want the average across uh, the set of uh, changes and we want to know how much is this changing with respect to unknown parameters so this part right here if you can see my cursor is the e of z that's the expectation of this whole thing so again here we're squaring squaring plus derivating derivating we take this and that's the fisher information matrix we inverse that that gives you the a roughly second order derivative of the kl divergence lovely so really um Fisher information is capturing the curvature of your parameter space. High fluctuations in this case um, are not very, very good. So you want a smaller update. 
low fluctuations in this case means that it's a fairly stable this thing so if you update this you're not going to have too many problems so you can update away run towards your this thing this is just another uh, formulation for the math same basic thing you see uh, log uh, the loss function the information matrix inverse no no changes there i just like this visualization where you're like okay what am i doing what am i doing and these are just different uh, things being mapped to the curvature in a sphere and you can see okay i want to minimize that distance keep the things rock and steady so why isn't this mainstream well first off this is second order method second order methods very very expensive we have things like adam which uh, navigates uh, high noise which is also a second order uh, this thing but it's an approximation and that's why adam has been become mainstream so you can at least see that uh, this is not like a, a this the family members of this guy are doing really really well and so far the parents of um, fisher information matrix and natural gradients have been like why can't you be like adam uh, you know adam is so good adam is so accomplished everybody loves adam why doesn't anybody love you you loser but now finally um you know uh truck kun hit this and it might be making a bit of a comeback so if i am very tedious to compute and even though it will empirically always lead to faster convergence because you're considering this curve space so you're kind of you're here and i'm like oh this is how it curves so i should jump this way while the others are just uh, adam's a little bit more intelligent normal gradients just, just kind of free balling it um this is still always going to lead to faster convergence but all of this extra computation that you have to do with the memory and the times etc makes the whole thing pointless so this is where our boy comes in and we get approximations again all sides all of these are going to be linked um, so feel free to check these out at your own leisure click through them but here you can see ooh, you can make some estimations such as using monte carlo simulations uh, to calculate expectations makes it much simpler use uh, stochastic this thing use a layer wise block diagonal approximation not quite sure how that works uh, you know a lot of deep learning is very very specific things with very very specific techniques i'm not too familiar with that but if you do know it drop in the comments i'd love to learn more this is another one uh, then we have uh, this which is uh, again so similar approximations essentially we're just uh, computing the jacobians we're using low rank you saw this with lora as well so we're computing that and um, this helps a lot Let's see is there anything important in the last sentence again you're just using another algorithm that approximates natural gradient descent instead of um, normal ones again this is more of the results you can see that these results work really really well with natural gradient descents um, hitting the minimums i feel like i'm beating a dead horse at this point so i'm gonna chill out a little bit we're just gonna walk through these nice and slow um while these things happen these two papers were honorable mentions i think worth reading but not really um cramming with the main thing again if you like this uh this article uh, this video and many others come from uh, my research done for my ai newsletter ai made simple come join us we are at 132,000 email subscribers recently everybody has a really really good time uh free to sign up for links will be in the description below along with this slide so you can click on them read through all the research papers at your own time etc i really appreciate you watching this make sure you loop this video for like 10 hours so that my watch time goes to help me help a bro out and thank you for watching i'll catch you soon make sure you hit like and i'll see you later peace